Hi. My name's host Derek. I'm host talking with French people. I'm here with an array of exciting characters and personalities, array of of bold bold moves and cold shoes. Tonight we want to talk about this idea of what constitutes time wasting versus what constitutes using time well or using time wisely. So the reason I am drawn to the topic is, number one, that there are several different metrics by which one might evaluate it, obviously. Not everybody's going to see time spent in way X as being a good use of time, and not everybody's going to see it as a waste of time. It's going to be dependent on your perspective, obviously. But there are some ways in which we can determine sort of a a neutral metric that will help us to think a little bit more clearly about what constitutes time well spent and what constitutes time wasted. So one thing that's a factor is quantity of a thing. If you're doing something that you already have done a million times before, or you're making another one of those things, and you've already made a million of them, then that might be considered less useful and more like playing. That's one factor to consider when talking about time wastage is, are you doing something that you always do that you don't ever have any problem getting yourself to do? In other words, is it the path of least resistance you're on? If it is, then you're more likely to, to score in the time wasting category and less likely to score in the time well spent category because most people who are thinking about these issues of time wasting and time well spent are probably thinking they're not spending their time wisely enough. Certainly I fall into that category a lot of times. But there's another factor. So I have a lot of songs I made as well, but there's distinctions within that factor aforementioned. Specifically, I've made a lot of freestyle songs and I've made a lot of sort of quick and dirty musical uploads but I made a lot fewer fully fully carefully attended to multi-track songs so today I spent most of the day making a multi-track version of Cantankerous Children and it wasn't just today, it was a several day process actually because I had to figure out the song, I had to write down the words, I had to write down the chords, I had to do all that kind of stuff. Um, now, for me, having accomplished that, finished it today and uploaded it, I felt as though, okay, well, that's, that's basically time well spent because while I may have a fair number of multi-track songs done already, They have a rewarding quality that other completed media don't. Namely, I can rewatch it many more times than I can rewatch a talking video. It's got a lot higher replayability for me if it's a song I like. It turned out to be a good song. And I never really know until I've lived with it for a while. I don't know right away whether it's a good song or not. And uh, thank you, Emma. And. Regardless, though, if it does turn out to be a song I like, it's definitely time well spent. Because I will revisit that song many times. I'll listen to it over and over again. And uh, I'll feel it's it's much more of a distinct, complete, non... non-example of a set thing, right? A good song is distinct and is a wholly unique entity like a person is. In a way that a video that's talking isn't really. So, the better the song, the more distinct the entity it is, I think, and the more realized of an entity. So, for me, then, that's another factor to consider into whether it's time well spent or time wasted is <coughs> what's the lasting impact of the work on you personally? Okay. Another possible way to consider a metric of whether you're spending time well or, or poorly is 
whether it gets you towards a given goal or goal area or whether it gets you away from that goal or goal area. This can be complicated because most of us have multiple goal or goal areas. Sometimes they'll even conflict with each other and to prioritize one means to uh, de-emphasize another. But for me, I know that I have a general notion of I would like to progress in terms of legitimacy, accomplishment, viewers, views, subscribers, fans, quote unquote, although I really don't like that word at all, but uh, all that shit, right? So I know that's a general goal direction I want to go in, and therefore one might say, oh, well, this doesn't get me in that direction. It gets me in another direction. There's not time well spent. But of course, I've got multiple goal areas, and like I said, some of them conflict. That's a trickier metric, but depending on what you're prioritizing, hi, Taylor, then that might be a good metric to, uh, to utilize to evaluate this question of how do you know whether something is time well spent or time wasted or time poorly spent? And so I've gone over a few different metrics so far. The first one was the quantity of things, times you've already done that thing before. So if if I upload five videos a day and I make another video, it's of minor significance. But if I if I upload one video every two months and I make another video, then it's a much more significance. But there's another factor, which is the long-term replayability or or service that the the action serves your long-term interest or not. So that's another factor I consider is when I make a music song that I like, I think I'm a good, that's much more completed work for me in, in my mind than if I'm making a talking video. And then the third thing I mentioned was uh, uh, whether or not it, it fits into some sort of goal framework. And that's where we left off. Now you're all caught up. I'm cut up. Are you catching me up? I'm catching you up, yeah. I'm caught up. I like it. I like the premise. And I like the, the body of it, and I like the analysis and shit. Thank you, Taylor. I appreciate that. So another factor to consider when questioning yourself, am I spending time wisely or am I spending time poorly, is how much you want to do it. There's some, it's not a very fair metric, but it would seem that there's to some extent a, they're inversely proportional. The more you want to do it, the less productive it is in some regard. Now, ideally it shouldn't be like that, but that seems to be a factor as well. Taylor, any thoughts on that one? Um, yeah, I had one, I lost it. Um, I think that's, a, I think that's like the most important one. So another factor. I think it's important go, go ahead. not to try to over. I think it's important not to try to over analyze and control that element of life because can't do it. It's too fucking stressful, and for no reason. And ultimately, some of the most valuable shit ends up happening at the most random times. Okay. Well, no one's disputing that, but it's also true that each of us has experiences where we go, okay, I just spent the last four hours doing X. And then we have an experience where we say, I just spent the last four hours doing Y. And the reality is we may be more pleased or less pleased with ourselves based on the difference between X and Y. Yeah, I mean, certainly some things are more valuable than others. So I guess I'm not saying here's how one should evaluate this or that there's a clear answer to it. I'm just saying these are some of the metrics that one can use when trying to determine if one wishes to this, uh, this the differentiation between time well spent and poorly spent. Now one approach you could take is to say I reject the I reject the dichotomy. I think it's self-fulfilling self prophecy that 
Yeah. If you believe all your time is well spent, then all your time is well spent. And that's all there is to it. You're having fun. However, if if that's true, what you're on a course that's taking you right off the, uh, over to the edge of a cliff, 100 feet from now, it doesn't matter how much fun you're having right now. And if, you, if you're going off the cliff in 100 feet, it's a bad course of direction. So there has to be an acknowledgement that systems evolve, things change over time, and we have some capacity to predict uh, the future at least a little bit and to know that, that a given decision may be wise or poor in terms of long-term consequences. Is it true that it's impossible to have a bad, unproductive time when you've got a spider cow? Well, not when you got one. Only that only works if you're actively using it in the activity. Then, well, I think. That, I mean, flipping it around is is an active activity, right? I think that's a different mechanism. I think that mechanism is the way to improve a non-spider cow related activity. It won't necessarily render any activity fine, though. If if your job is to um, to uh, praise morons for their taste in television, then flipping this back and forth isn't going to solve that. If you need to give detailed analysis as to why their taste in things is better than yours, that's your task right now. You know, I, it kind of sounds interesting for a second, but. If they're really morons and they're like, yeah, see, I am smarter than you. Well, Tommy, man, you just, it's like they're so dumb that you can't even, you can't even, like, pull any kind of subtext on them at all. Then, in that case. I hate, I hate that. <laughs> I, I told Tara that. She goes, what are you talking about? I said, it's really fucking hard for me to make fun of you if you can't meet me partway at all. Right. We can't have this race. If it's a running race, because you are legless. But INTJs, if you get an INTJ it, with a good sense of humor, which uh, it's kind of an oxymoron, but they're there. Uh, now, there is some subtext heavy, just gold. Okay, so time was spent, time was spent. Now, the next vector is reward center. Which reward center is it nailing for you? If it's nailing an immediate uh, reward center, you're less likely to consider it productive, good use of time. If it's nailing a longer term reward center, you're more likely to think it's productive use of time. But if you're if it's dealing with a super long term um, reward center, then you're again less likely to think it's a good use of time. Is this science or observation? It is not the, out of my ass, Taylor. The best science there is. Where do you think the best uh, science experiments are conducted? Just tell them not to splice up the differences because I know they're the same thing. Don't splice up the differences. <laughs> no, you're right. Well, what does that mean? Don't don't get sidetracked in in defining the non-definition or the non-separation of the two. Okay. Um. So look. This is a certain reward center for me. I am getting FE rewards. I'm enjoying hanging out with Taylor. I was enjoying talking out of my ass before Taylor got here. Now it's it's much more um, it's much more. Uh, what's the word? Bigger pieces. It's much more I interactive. Now. Yeah. I wish I had some since you've raved about it so. Yeah. Next time I go to Wichita, I'm going to get a bottle and mail it to you. All right, cool. They'll probably, like, NSA will probably take it away. And, and they'll they'll be arrested for, for violating got, some sort of... Brother, they, big brother, some of your pop got out. Peak beverage, interstate peak beverage smuggling ring. Anyway, uh, that's not really what we're talking about. We're talking about reward centers. So we have an NE reward center which says... Here's a new idea that hasn't been said yet, and we might just want to pursue that. But if we just did that all the time, well, we'd be overweighting one reward center. So it's good to have FE reward center. That comes from chilling and hanging out and chatting with people and stuff like that. It's good to have any reward center. That comes from busting down the new ideas. It's also good to have a little TI reward where we keep shit actually organized on top of occasionally. Because, you know, it's cool when you kill a 
uh, when you kill it in a video and you put it up and you're like, oh, that's a good one, that's SI reward. Oh, yeah, that's juicy. It's a juicy SI. Uh, TI rewards are super rewarding because they're just a good chunk of TI is like Edmantium. It's just fucking indestructible. Edmantium. I, good. I, I'm, I'm glad to. I'm glad you're comparing it to magical metals. Um, it's not magical, it's Galorian. Mithril. Mithril. It, there's a kind of magical metal called mithril as well. Anyway, so I saw, uh, are we still on this topic? I, I was. I realized I was indulging myself and figured I better get back on to the point. Which was, uh, so for me, I can easily enough frame my reward centers in terms of my MBTI conscious function. Annie makes sense, TI makes sense, FE makes sense, SI makes sense. It doesn't make sense for me to frame my reward center in terms of NI, because I don't find that to be rewarding. NI is, is a uh, is a means to an end, right? The reward isn't found in either FE or it's found in any or something, but the NI itself is not a rewarding process for me. It's just something that happens. I'm like, oh, good, that's that's happened. I'm glad I don't have to think about that. And then with the TE, also not rewarding. In fact, quite the opposite. It's it's pissing me off time. You know, that's what TE is all about. It's all about pissing Eric off. And then with, <laughs> with FI, I mean, I, I kind of value it, but I certainly can't imagine uh, being rewarded in that, it'd be, that being a reward center. Hi. And then finally, SE, also not a reward center, a means to an end. All those things are means to an end. FI are means to, I don't know. But What's this? This can be a reward center right here. This is SE. This? Yeah. I'd call this more SI for, for you. What you're describing doing this, this this is a frequent activity. This is a... Is it soothing? It's like a binky or something? It's, well, it's, it's a stem, you know? And special ed... Autistic people, are, it's stimming when they go like this. It means self-stimulation. <laughs> anyway, I see that as more SI. So, so I'm being retarded. Literally. No, we're just... Well, yeah, we're... we're uh, my little ENTP just, like, fell off the bed. I'm sorry to hear that. This... Okay, so those I think probably everybody can identify. If, if my my random guess hypothesis is correct, then everybody can, should be able to identify with understanding a reward center through one of their MBTI conscious functions and have trouble understanding that framing of something as a reward center for the ones that aren't conscious functions. You can check that within your own brain and see if I'm right or wrong. Um, and then... The other, I, I'm going to talk well, one more metric for evaluating whether something's a good use of time or a bad use of time is the the response, feedback that you get from other people. Uh, that's a dangerous one because if you're making shit, it's fine. If you're making videos and you're getting feedback saying, oh, editing that was a good use of your time, Eric, because people really seem to like it a lot more than non-edited ones or maybe not, you know? That's fine, but if you're doing shit like making decisions about life in the real world and saying, you know, I really think I want to go part-time at this job. I'm not really liking it anymore. You can only pay so much attention to other people's advice in that regard. If you're talking about what you want to do or not want to do, try not to listen to other people as my advice, except for me and this advice, of course, <laughs> because... Uh, because other people are, are often wrong and shit like that, they don't have enough details. And you gotta persist against the naysayers. That's the best kind of fuck you. It's the very best. People the best kind you, of you cannot do that. It's not going to work and if something does. That's the very best. The most delicious flavor of fuck you. Is when someone tells you you can't do something? And then you do it and you come oh. back later and you're like... Oh. This is that fuck you at eight. 
and you don't even say anything about it. You just you walk into the room with it around your shoulders, metaphorically. <laughs> you know, it's a great it's a great accessory. And both parties see it, and you are luxuriant in its in its softness and glory. And the other person is green with envy, looking at this beautiful mink shoal or whatever they're called that you're wearing. Stole, soul, Did it, mink stole. Um, do, was it you discussing um, the virtue, uh, my relative appreciation of the secret insults versus the overt? The, yes, because I, I, I personally don't. I don't feel the juice on that because who are you sharing it with? You're sure because it you're sharing it with the person that you're that you're destroying because when you've done everything that they didn't want to happen to them, you did it secretly, so they still have to fucking thank you for not doing it. Publicly. Oh, that okay. That's a different one than I I thought you were talking. I, that's something different. Yes, we were talking about that. I can understand the value of that. And I, but, you know, for me, I think I follow that course in general simply as a matter of I'm not very ruthless. I'm actually not very ruthless. Define ruthless. Well, if I've got somebody in a tough spot, I'll almost never press the advantage. Not because it's wise, although it is, but because I'm soft. Oh, he's a softie. Well, if, 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 if someone's, like, at a disadvantage, that certainly takes a lot of the wind out of winning. Right, but I mean, the problem, though. Most, most types of winning require you to, at some point, have them on the ropes. So, I have a tendency when I have them on the ropes... To want to be like, okay, you can quit now, you know, or, or just be like, oh, you're kind of, I'm, oh, I'm beating you now. Well, it's because you're using a little bit of fuck your immature fe and your stupid immature logic, and <laughs> sure, someone who like choking in the ropes is gonna then get let out and then come back at you, but they do every time, so that's why you have to smash their face in between the concrete and your feet. Right. Metaphorically. Yeah, I got it, yeah. I, I, I mean, I guess the thing is, if people mistake my my kindness for weakness, then, oh then that's the sort of thing that doesn't, I'm not too squeamish about bringing a hammer then. It's super offensive. Yeah, it really is. Normally disgusting on their part. I've actually got a guy right now who's trying to rip me off. Um, he doesn't know me. Just one is, and and I'm thinking I'm I'm stringing him along a little bit. I might have him drive down here to try to make a trade with me. What it's okay. It's very sleek. He's it's gun broker. It's a or it's a arms trader. It's, it's a classified website, but he's trying to he's trying to hustle me on a gun that I've got listed, and he's doing it with a lot of fe, really schmoozy, giving me stupid information that's wrong. That's uh, ill advised. We we don't like that. I, I I don't like it. It makes me not trust the person. No, he did. So he made me this offer. Three weeks ago, because uh, I got this this thing priced not really to move. It's just kind of priced to like, well, if somebody wants it. But he made me this offer, and it's basically he offered me a six hundred dollar item or a fifteen hundred dollar item, and I played dumb, and he told me that they're worth about the same, you know, basically, um, with a little bit of that smug sort of fv. You know, he's doing the big con man thing, and I just ignored it. And then he must have forgot that he already contacted me because I got another one today. And it's just, uh, just a little bit more than I can handle. Right back to that. 
So. Right. The thing is, I I don't know about you. In those kind of instances, I usually feel embarrassed for the other person, and don't necessarily come down on them. I mean, obviously I don't get scammed by them, but I'll just sort of like, uh, n- uh, I don't want to deal with you. I'm type A. I'm type A. <laughs> That's good. I mean, those people deserve to get to get a little bit of foot up their ass. So what he did then, I said, well, okay, send me some pictures. I acted interested. He did send me pictures. I want, but he had one in the background. That's not the one he's offering me. I want that one. We'll see how this goes. I gotta go see. I heard a noise. Because of where my house is, at the end of the alley, this happens periodically. Sometimes people will come to the come down the alley thinking it goes through, but it doesn't go through. And then what's also happened is if people are like running from the cops, they'll tend to come down here to the end of this alley. And earlier at night, I was sitting here and heard this like like move move shit, crash crash shit around over there, right? And I was like, what the fuck? Because there's, no, there's nothing there for for people to be there for any legitimate reason, especially not this time of the evening. So I opened the door, I was like, who's, who's out there? What's going on? And the guy's like, there's a guy. And he, he was kind of over by my shit over there. And then he, he turned around and started walking the other way towards the end of the alley. He's like, oh, I was just, uh, just cutting through here. And... I'm like, I, and then I close the door, go to get the flashlight, and I come back. Instead of going down the alley, continuing down the alley, he had turned, circled back around, come back around and climbed over the fence. Like, I got back with the flashlight, he was, like, just climbing over the fence, right? And then, mm-hmm. just like five seconds later, I saw, saw a light shining over where he was. And Is that a big blue diesel mag light? Yeah. Yeah, mine's kind of bashed up, and and I'm taking it apart. These are good. Yeah, these are important anyway. things to have. Uh, anyway, uh, the cops had lights on him. I thought I thought they had it, got him probably, but then when I drove away, like half an hour later, um, I saw the cops were driving away from right there, and I was like, "Oh, you guys didn't get him?" And they're like, "No, he got away." And, I'm like, but he just climbed over the fence right over there. But I didn't hold him that when they when they were looking for him because I didn't I didn't even know for sure that was what was going on. It just because they didn't have their red and blue lights on. They just had this this like obviously like cop fucking light from the side of the car thing, you know? Yeah, I mean, you can get those. There's always that one asshole in every high school class that had. A police auction vehicle with that flood on the side. <laughs> so, anyway, that's why I was looking around outside because I was a little nervous about it. Cause, so. Katie just got gangster. Yeah. Did she? Mm-hmm. She told someone basically that um, they need to stop. They're not going to win. And from this moment on out, how they behave determines their outcome. That sounds like That's- a very good use of time. And that concludes this episode of Talking with Famous People, all about how to tell whether you're using time wisely or using it poorly. 
Answer, we've been using it wisely, extremely wisely.